we were sort of labeled as unintelligent immigrants and uh, my parents were ridiculed uh, whether it's at the gas station or the grocery stores they you know they were made fun of because they can speak English um, I've had numerous times where people would say to me wow you speak very good English um, and that you know it's just knowing that uh, my you know my hair color is different I have an accent my parents don't speak English um, you know there have been events where school events where we went on field trips and my mother will pack uh, traditional food for us like a um, a bag of rice with beef jerky um, Asian jerky which is very good by the way but uh, you know my mother would pack things like that for us for our trip to the Milwaukee Zoo and we would be so embarrassed to open that up and eat it with everyone else because everyone else would have I don't know, like a ham sandwich or whatever they had, a sandwich of some sort. Thinking back on it, I was ashamed for the wrong reasons, which I shouldn't have been ashamed, but that was me finding myself. Um, and that was me learning to be comfortable in my culture, in my skin. I was born in Thailand. Uh, my parents, my family and I, we uh, immigrated here when I was six years old. And, you know, I mean, even in, in Thailand, in, even during our time in Thailand that, you know, our family faced discrimination because we were refugees. We weren't Thais. My memories from my time living in the refugee camp with my family um, were wonderful memories. I mean, I have very nostalgic memories of the camp uh, because as a child, I, I had no worries. Uh, you know, it didn't matter that I didn't have shoes, uh, but it, it was some of the best times of my life. I, I remember walking on uh, dirt roads without shoes and you know with the hot tropical sun shining down on me I mean it's just things like that and playing in the rain um, playing all day into the night in a, in a refugee camp with other uh, refugee children it, it was the best time of my life uh, as I remember I'm sure my parents recall differently and I'm sure that they're the one because of their hard work I didn't feel the pain that they felt. My biggest concern for the Hmong community in Milwaukee is, is socioeconomic progress. Uh, how do we move beyond what we have today? Uh, you know, how do we elevate the services we are uh, providing today, um, the resources we have, and um, how do we build an infrastructure to support the growth and progress? I think my favorite lawyer joke is when I meet people for the first time, they ask me what I do for a living, I tell them I'm a lawyer, and then uh, they ask me what kind of lawyer I am, and my response always, always is, I'm a good lawyer. So it's not so much a joke, but it, yeah, that's what I like to say, and I consider that a joke. My interest in the law really peaked. Well, it started when I was in high school and I overheard a, uh, a fellow classmate say that she was going to go to law school. And at that point, I, I said to myself, why can't I go? Uh, but that, I put that on back burner. You know, I became a mother and was pursuing my undergraduate studies. So I put that on back burner. I didn't think much about it. But it wasn't until my brother was in a car accident that um, really left me feeling uh, helpless and hopeless and also seeing my parents feeling the same that was what really drove me to at that point make the decision that uh, i need to go to law school i i really do like working as a lawyer there's you know i i get to affect um, so many people in so many different ways and i think i really i truly believe having become a lawyer i truly believe that knowledge is power and the more we know the more um, we the better decisions we can make and as a lawyer i see that more so than um, any other job i've had i mean I, I worked in a professional capacity as a systems analyst before i went to law school so you know if i was to compare those two jobs i can uh, hands down say that i absolutely love uh, the work i do and the ability that i have as a lawyer i think as a family lawyer or or even as a social security workers comp lawyer um, I see what my clients go through, and so I'm more aware and conscious and cognizant of um, how my life plays out so that I don't make mistakes that I've seen other people do. I've seen, I, I mean, I do see other lawyers who uh, 
you know, eventually go through the same situations that our clients go through. But uh, I, you know, I think we have to, for me personally, I just, I, I try to be more um, intentional with how I live my life so that I, I live it in the healthiest way possible. Um, you know, using my experience from my private practice and what I see my clients go through. The only advice I can give a young woman who is interested in making a career in the law is from my own personal experience, and that is you have to believe in yourself first. Um, because if you believe in yourself, you believe in, believe in your vision, you believe in your dream, you will figure a way to make it happen, to make it come true. It's hard, but it's, it's doable because if you don't invest in yourself, no one else will.